Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us this morning. If you're joining us on Zoom, uh, please make sure that you're muting your microphones uh, just to avoid any feedback or noise interruptions we might have and make sure that your video is off. This is our first community gathering. My name is Craig Robertson. I work at Park Hill Smith and Cooper, and I'm also the 2020 Community Prayer Luncheon Committee Chair. And I just want to welcome you this morning. This year's committee uh, community prayer luncheon has been postponed due to the COVID, but we will hold this event later on this year so that we can all gather together in person. But we don't need a prayer luncheon to get together to pray. Amen. And as Eddie said, there's no better time to pray for our community than right now. It makes me think of Hebrews 10 where it says, do not give up meeting together as some are prone to doing, but to encourage one another. And this morning, we want to lift one another up. We want to spur one another on to good deeds. It's so exciting to see even this technology, God is moving. He is moving in our city. He is not dormant. He is not dead. He is living. He is active. And he is not simply moving because of what is going on. He is using this for his good. Amen. So thank you for joining us this morning. I hope that the Lord uses this time to encourage you. So we're going to have four of us pray for some specific things, and I invite each of you to join us this morning as we lift our voices to God, the God of peace himself. So this first speaker, I'd like to welcome Mayor Dan Pope. Welcome this morning, Dan. How are you today? I'm great, Craig. Thanks for, thanks for uh, those kind words, and uh, thanks for helping put this together. I'm very thankful that we're taking time to pray this morning as a community. Absolutely. Dan is a uh, mayor of our city and he'll be praying actually for the government. And as you guys can imagine, there's a lot on the shoulders of the government right now. I know from a business standpoint, there's a lot on our leadership and I can't imagine the magnitude that's on the government at this moment. So Dan, welcome this morning. And we ask you to invite you to pray for us and the government right now. Thank you. If you would join me in prayer, Heavenly Father, we pray this morning for our city and county leaders. Yes. Father. As you as you give them responsibility to watch and guide over the nations they serve, Lord, just as you told the prophet, prophet Ezekiel that you made him watchman for the people of Israel, I pray that, that these leaders, that they will be godly watchmen and watchwomen over your creation. We pray that just as you renewed Ezekiel's call as a watchman, that you will renew the call for every city leader. Lord, we pray for supernatural strength for our city and county leaders. We pray that you raise them up like Joshua so that they can be leaders of great courage. Lord, help them not to fear the decisions that they have to make because they know that you are with them. We ask that you will help them to be strong and have good courage and that they will observe and, and do according to all that you have commanded them, Father. God, we pray your grace over all of our leaders, over President Trump, over Governor Abbott, over our South Plains city and county leaders. We recognize that your grace, your grace is sufficient to keep them. We ask, Father, that through your power, they may be perfect, made perfect in their weaknesses. And even when they're insulted or criticized or persecuted, it is in their weakness, then they are strong. Heavenly Father, further, we pray that you bless these leaders and that they not grow weary of doing good, but in due season will reap all the things we all strive for because your word says that you will give us the desires of our hearts. Lord, grant our people the desires for their city, their county, their state, and their country. Father, we know that you hear our prayer. We lift our great communities, our county, our state, and federal government, our great United States, up to you on this Easter Holy Week. And we pray for renewal and resurrection and strength 
It's all prayed in your son's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mayor Pope. The next guest I'd like to welcome is Corey Powell. Corey is the director of Texas Tech Office of Institutional Diversity, and he was also a past chairman of the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce Board. So Corey, welcome this morning, and Corey is going to be praying for the faith community, which needs a lot of help right now with the financial side of things, and also the community's frontline workers, which we know are putting themselves in harm's way on a daily basis. Welcome this morning, Corey. Thank you so much. Um, it's an honor to be um, with you all and to come together in this time of corporate prayer at a time where it's certainly needed. Let's pray. Oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name. This morning, we come to you humbly and sincerely in the name that is above every other name, the name of your only begotten son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that because of him, we are able to now come to you boldly and find strength in our time of need. Lord, we have no help or hope but you. Father, we come recognizing that we are in need of your power and presence. We come because we need your protection. We come seeking your divine intervention and assistance on behalf of believers across the city of Lubbock, the state of Texas, and indeed around the globe. Lord, at this time, we lift up those who are unselfishly and courageously on the front line during this pandemic. We ask for your strength and your safety for the first responders, the EMTs, the law enforcement officers, the firefighters who bravely show up in times of crisis and need. We ask that you would keep them safe, O oh God. We lift up every doctor, every nurse, anesthesiologist, respiratory therapist, technician, mental health professional, and all other persons within the healthcare profession who whose job it is, oh God, and calling it is to provide comfort and recovery and healing in this time to those who are sick. Lord, we are mindful of the custodial workers and maintenance professionals who work in our hospitals and our clinics as they too are on the front line. As they sanitize and disinfect, they place themselves in harm's way. All God of these individuals are truly servants and warriors watch over them and their families, we pray. We so are, are so grateful, O oh God, for our farmers, our truck drivers and stockers and butchers and bakers and cashiers, all of those working in stores to ensure that we have food and other necessary supplies. We pray that you would be with them and those that are in nutrition and restaurant and the hospitality, hospitality industry, O oh God. We lift them up, those who work in transit and transportation, we ask that you shield each of them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, as they strive to continue to provide us with senses of normalcy during this unprecedented time. Finally, Lord, we lift up our faith community, our faith leaders, those who we turn to for encouragement and direction during times of trial and tribulation and turmoil. Strengthen them as they heed your clarion call to impart your word, your truth, and hope during these uncertain and unusual times. We thank you that you hear us when we pray and we plead the blood of Jesus over each one on the front line, God. When they grow weary, strengthen them. When they're discouraged, encourage them. When they've reached their extremities, be the wind beneath their wings. This we do pray and ask in the name of your son, our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Corey, that was great. Appreciate you. Next, I'd like to welcome Dr. McDowell. Dr. Scott McDowell is a new president to LCU. Did you come on board uh, last week? Is that right? Or when, did, when was the official day that you started, Scott? April 1st. So it has <laughs> been just a week, hasn't it? Well, welcome to Lubbock Community. Uh, I was just telling him a moment ago, this isn't a time that it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're coming in the middle of this. This is, I think, an ordained opportunity. God has placed you in a specific position at a specific time, and that gives me a lot of encouragement and hope. So thank you for joining us this morning. 
Thank you, Craig. And I'm delighted to be a part of the Lubbock community and grateful for a community that's praying together. So let's pray together for our students and our educators. Father, we, we love you and we acknowledge that you are the one true God. And we are so grateful for your goodness to us, even in, in this time. And God, we thank you that uh, this challenge, this pandemic has, has made us realize our own limitations. And God, as I expressed to Craig earlier, I'm, I'm grateful to beginning my work here in Lubbock at such a time as this. And I do believe that, that you are in control and we acknowledge that. And so we're thankful for the challenge of this crisis and the fact that it turns us toward you. And Father, right now, uh, I lift up every educator, every educator at every level and the challenges that they are, they are dealing with in uh, going to the online environment, to the virtual environment and, and embracing distance learning. And Father, uh, there are a lot of challenges there. And, and so I pray for all of them from kindergarten all the way through uh, doctoral level teaching that you would bless them. God, we know that you are the basis of wisdom and you're the basis of knowledge. And we know that in Jesus, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are, are there. And so we pray that you would unlock those treasures and that you would help these educators to educate from a base that is really grounded in you, where all real knowledge and wisdom come from. So we ask for that. And God, we lift up our students and we pray for them that uh, you would meet their needs and, and that you would uh, quell their anxieties right now and that you would help them. I, I pray for your spirit to just be engaged in the whole learning process for them and help them to go beyond what they could do on their own. God, we pray that for each of us, that as we lean into this challenging time, we would not rely on ourselves, but that we would rely on you. And so, Father, we pray the prayer of the psalmist that you would show us your ways, that you would teach us your path, that you would guide us. And God, we, we put our hope in you this day and all day long. And Father, we pray the prayer of Paul to the Philippians, specifically for our students and students all the way, all uh, across the world, and, but specifically here in Lubbock. We pray that their love would abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that they might be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, that they would be filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to your glory and to your praise. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. McDowell. I have the privilege of being a principal in Park Hill, Smith & Cooper, so we're a local business uh, here in Lubbock. We've got uh, office locations in 10 different places across New Mexico and Texas. So I'm going to have the privilege of praying for small businesses in our community. And it's been great to see the community come out and support. A lot of our local restaurants love seeing the lines to the drive ups and to the to go orders. Uh, but there's also some challenges that a lot of our local businesses are facing. So if you would join me in prayer for our local businesses, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Lord, we are anxious. We don't know what the future holds, but like Peter said, to where else can we go? You are the Holy One of God, so right now we are coming to you. And through our anxiety, I pray a spirit moves so thickly that we feel your peace that surpasses all understanding. And through our worry about the future, help us to know that you hold the future. Nothing is new to you, nothing is shocking. No one has slipped this situation by you or caught you off guard. You are mighty. And you are holy. And help us to remember that you are still God. You are still in control. You are still moving. And you are moving amongst us. You're in the midst of us right now, working on our hearts. And you're touching some hearts that haven't been touched and been still for a long time. You're kindling to life new flames, flames of hope and flames of passion. And Lord, blow on those flames, stoke those flames into a roaring fire, a fire that is going to sweep across our community of Lubbock. And from that fire, I pray a passion is risen up in us to be the church for this community, to be salt and light for these businesses that need it. And I pray you surround these businesses with people to encourage them, people to support them, people to pray for them, people to help renew their minds to who you are 
Renew our minds daily so we'll remember who you are and whose we are. And let us find comfort in your word. Let us that those words pour over us and to bolster our hope in you and to remind us of your promises that if you're going to take care of the birds of the air, then how much more will you take care of us? That even in this valley we're in, you are working all things for the good and that your mercies are new every morning and that you will have trouble, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And just as Joel tells us, the Lord will restore the years the locust has eaten. May that be the verse we cling to right now, that you will restore these years and you will make this beautiful in its time. I pray that these years right now that we are struggling, maybe when we're struggling with our faith in the future, that we can look back on this, this time right now when you are moving and remind ourselves of how powerful and gracious and merciful you have been to us in this time. You are good and you are holy and we lift our voices this morning, all for your honor and for your glory. Amen. Well, I wanna thank again, Mayor Pope, Corey Powell and Dr. McDowell for being with us this morning. The fact that our community is led by such godly men and women and the chamber with Eddie and Amy and Rachel and everybody that has put this together, this is one of the main reasons I love living in Lubbock, Texas. So thank you guys for being here this morning. Next, we would like to share a quick video with you. So Haley is gonna share us with us a chamber video. It's about him. It's about her. It's about them. It's about every family that calls Lubbock home. And every other person chasing their dream across Lubbock. We do it to help businesses prosper and communities thrive. It takes passion, tenacity, and teamwork. It requires perseverance, leadership, and innovation. Who are we? We are the catalyst for business growth, convener for leaders and influencers, the champion for a stronger community. We are the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce. Because every dream should have a chance to come true. Thank you, Haley. It's certainly an unprecedented time we're living in, but we appreciate all of you for joining us this morning. And we hope we're able to do this and unite our city in prayer again soon. So please stay tuned. Uh, check the Chamber Facebook page and check your email for the next community prayer gathering. And on behalf of the Chamber of uh, Lubbock and the Board of Directors and staff, we thank you for being, us with, being with us today. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord, Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful and also will do it in Jesus' name. I hope everybody has a blessed and happy Easter weekend. You're dismissed. <laughs>